Bill O'Reilly is standing by live in the White House with the 44th President of the United States. Mr. President, thank you very much for doing this, and I must thank you on behalf of the Fox News Channel for helping out Greg Palcott and uh, Mr. Wieg, who got roughed up in Cairo. And it was you, it was Robert Gibbs, the State Department, who really saved them, and we all thank you very much. Well, listen, uh, those guys showed enormous courage, as so many journalists do around the world. And so not only was it important for us to make sure they were safe, for them and their families, but to uphold the basic principle of free speech and freedom of the press. That's a universal value we care about and uh, I know Fox cares about, so I'm just well, glad these guys are uh, Those guys could have died, and, and I just want everybody to know that, uh, you know, the State Department really saved them. All right, Mubarak, is he gonna leave soon? Well, you know, he's, only he knows what he's gonna do, uh, but here's what we know, is that Egypt is not gonna go back to what it was. The, the Egyptian people want freedom, they want free and fair elections, they want a representative government, they want a responsive government. And so what we've said is, you have to start a transition now. Mubarak's already decided he's not running for re-election again, his term is up this year. And what we've said is, let's make sure that you get all the groups together in Egypt, let the Egyptian people make a determination, what's the process for an orderly transition, but one that is a meaningful transition, and that leads to a government that... So you don't know when he's going to leave? Well, you know, uh, ultimately, the, the United States can't, you can't absolutely dictate leave, but what you, happens. You, you but, know, what we can, but what we can do, Bill, is we can say that uh, the time is now for you to start making a change in that country. He's already done that, but the, the longer he stays in, the more people are going to die. And the other problem is Mubarak knows a lot of bad things about the United States. I'm sure you're aware of that. Well, uh, let me say this. The United States and Egypt have been a partner for a long time. Right. He's done he some is, bad he is, things. He is, he has been a good partner when it comes to uh, the peace with Israel. Uh, there have been counterterrorism efforts that he's been very supportive of, but what we've also consistently said to him, both publicly and privately, is that trying to suppress your own people is something that is not sustainable. And part of the message that I think we're seeing all around the world is when you resort to suppression, when you resort to violence, that does not work. Yeah, but it worked for 30 years, so he had his run. But he, can, he knows a lot of bad things about us, rendition and all of that, and, and I'm sure you know that. So I'm just worried that he might go off the reservation. The Muslim Brotherhood, great concern to a lot of people. Uh, they a threat to the USA. I think that the Muslim Brotherhood is one faction in Egypt. They don't have majority support in Egypt, no, they are, threat, they, but they are well organized and there are strains of their ideology that are anti-U.S. There's no doubt about it, but here's the thing that we have to understand. There are a whole bunch of uh, secular folks in Egypt, there are a whole bunch of uh, educators and uh, civil society in Egypt that wants to come to the fore as well. And so it's important for us not to say that our only two options are either the Muslim Brotherhood or a suppressed but you don't want the Muslim Egyptian people. What I want is a representative government in Egypt, and I have confidence that if Egypt moves in an orderly transition process, that we'll have a, a government in Egypt no, that I we can so. work with together as a partner. Those are tough boys, the Muslim Brotherhood. I wouldn't want them anywhere near that government. Um, federal judge in Florida said, uh, New health care law is unconstitutional. Supreme Court may follow in that. It's going to be very close. Are you prepared for that law to go down? Well, I think the judge in Florida was wrong. Keep in mind that we've had 12 judges that said uh, that, that just threw this case out, the notion that the health care yeah, law was unconstitutional. Now. Well, it, it, first it goes to the appellate court. Uh, there's a district court, then there are appeal courts, and then it goes to the Supreme Court. But, but here's, the, the, here's the key point, Bill. Uh, and I said this in the State of the Union. I don't want to spend the next two years refighting the battles of the last two years. Yeah, but you're going to what, have what, to. What, well, I don't think the that's... The Supreme Court's no, going to hear this no, one way or the other. What the, what the American people have said is, we want cost controls in health care, we want security in health care. What I've said to the Republicans is, if you guys have ideas in terms of improving the health care system, if you have ideas that I can embrace on things like... They're not going to bother with it, though. They're no. going to wait till it goes no. to the court and hope it gets thrown out 5-4. Yeah. My question is, are you prepared yeah. if it gets thrown out? What are you going to do? Here's what I'm not prepared to do. I'm not prepared to go back to a day when the American people, if you've got a pre-existing condition, if gets you had a heart attack, that you right. can get healthy. Here's what the Wall Street Journal said. I want you to react to this quote. Mr. Obama is a determined man of the left whose goal is to redistribute much larger levels of income across society. He may give tactical ground when he has to, 
as he did on taxes to avoid a middle class tax increase, but he will resist to his last day any major changes to Obamacare and the other load bearing walls of the entitlement state. This is the Wall Street <laughs> Journal. Uh, you know, painting you as a pretty left wing guy, you're, yeah. you're going to draw well, the, the line. The Wall Street Journal will probably paint you as a left wing guy. No, no, uh, no. Uh, I mean, if, if you're talking about the Wall Street Journal editorial, editor, page, that's, that's what this is. You know, the, uh, you know that's like uh, quoting the, the New York Times editorial. Do you deny page. their assessment? Do you deny oh, that you're a man who wants to redistribute wealth? Absolutely. You deny that? Absolutely. I, Bill, I didn't raise taxes once. I lowered taxes over the last two years. But the I lowered, tax, that I you lowered taxes for the last two years. But the, and, the, the and entitlements that I, you champion do, do redistribute wealth in the sense that they provide insurance coverage for 40 million people who don't is, have it. What is absolutely true is I think in this country, there's no reason why if you get sick, you should go bankrupt. Now, that, the notion that that's a radical principle, I don't think the majority of people uh, would agree with you on. Then why do the majority of people in the polls not support Obamacare? Actually, I think it's pretty evenly... It's close. It, 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 the it's majority even, it, it, it's evenly divided, Bill, and, and here's what it, uh, I think a lot of people saw. Over the last two years, at a time when people were concerned about the economy and concerned about jobs, what they saw was a lot of arguing in Congress, which is what they always see is a lot of arguing in Congress. And they don't like the process, and they felt that our focus wasn't on what they're focused on, which is how are we going to win the future? How are we going to make sure that jobs are right here in the United States of America? How are we building a competitive society uh, at a time when we're losing jobs? Uh, yeah, some to, people to see it that way, but other people see it's and, a huge so, government intrusion and you guys just want to take over basically decision making for Americans. It's, it's an ideological argument. Let but, me move but, ahead. But, well, no, but Bill, I, I just want to be clear about this uh, because if you look at what we've done, what we said was, if you've got health care that you like, you keep it. I know, I know, and, 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 Mr. And, President. And, I, I listen to it every day. I know, and I listen to you. And, and, and what I hear you uh, saying, Bill, for example, is, is the notion that uh, us saying to people that don't have health insurance, don't make me pay for your health insurance. Don't, don't make me pay for it when you go to the emergency room. If you get sick, you have a responsibility to make sure that you've got coverage. There's nothing socialist about that. That's saying to Americans, we're going to each of us be responsible for our own health care. And that's something that I think the majority of Americans okay, uh, believe. Okay, but you, you understand that a lot of Americans feel that you're a big government liberal who wants to intrude on their personal freedom. Now, they also say that you've been moving... <laughs> no, that's what... Yeah, come on, you know that. I, I think mean, that about a lot of folks who watch you, Bill, believe that. They, they think way worse <laughs> I, than me. I, I mean, believe. And I, I give you credit, you've got a, a pretty big viewership, so well, you've, you've been trying. persuasive. But the pundits now say you're moving to the center <laughs> uh -huh. to raise your approval. Uh, is that is that true? You're moving to the center? No. Because no? we were set up over there and then they moved you a little to the center. <laughs> <laughs> here, here, here's, here's what I think is true. Over the first uh, two years of my presidency, we had a complete disaster, right? We had a complete crisis. The financial markets were breaking down. Uh, we were slipping into a great depression. And we had to take a bunch of extraordinary steps in order to make sure that the economy was growing again, which it is now growing, making sure that the private sector was creating jobs again. It's now doing that. And now our focus is not on refighting the battles of the last two years. So you're not the moving to the, the center? The, 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 I've, I, haven't, I, I didn't move to uh, where you, people you, thought you I was. You haven't moved anywhere. That, you're the same guy. Well, I'm the same guy, and my practical focus, my common sense focus right now is how do we out-innovate, out-educate, out-build, out-compete the rest of the world? How do we create jobs here in the United States of America? How do we make sure that businesses are thriving? But how do we also make sure that ordinary Americans can live out the American Listen, dream? Because right I, I now they don't feel do like it. they are. I hope you can do it. I know because you do. Uh, Americans need to be secure in their lives. Exactly. Okay. Worst part of this job. What's the worst, absolute worst part of being president of the United States? Worst part of the job is, uh, first of all, I've got a jacket on on Super Bowl Sunday. And that's terrible. Uh, if I wasn't president, that would not okay, be if happening. If I have a tie, you don't have a tie. <laughs> uh, biggest problem for me is being in the bubble. I mean, it's very hard to escape. You know, you can't go to the corner. Right, so everybody watching every move you make. Every move you make, you, and and over time, you, you know what happens is that you feel like uh, that that you're not able to just have a, a spontaneous conversation with folks. Can't. And 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 that's a that's a loss. That's a big loss. What is it about the job that has surprised you the most that you weren't prepared for coming in here? You know, I, th I think that the thing you understand intellectually, but you don't understand in your gut until you're in the job, is that every decision that comes to my desk is something that nobody else has been able to solve. The, the easy stuff gets solved somewhere 
by somebody else. By the time it gets to me, you don't have easy answers. You don't have the best. So it's like wave after wave of complicated problems, complicated and there problems. you are. Yeah. And I it's mean, a massive and, headache. And, 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 well, and what you have to make your best judgment about uh, this is probably our best approach for the American people. Uh, but you know that uh, you don't have perfect information, and you know that you're not going to have hey, a perfect solution to everything. Shot. Now, people who know you have told me that you've changed a little bit since you've become president. Well, I'm a lot grayer, that's for sure. Well, my, every president does. does yeah. But have you, do you think you have changed as a person since you have become president? I think if you ask Michelle, who knows me best, I think, uh, or, or my closest friends, I think they'd say, I'm basically the same guy as when I came in. Can I tell you what they say? Yeah, what do they say? You're much more guarded. Well, I, I think what is true is that when you're in this job, everything you say could affect markets. It could affect what no, happens No, I, I know overseas. that. But even on a personal level, some people know you say, you know, he's not, he doesn't have the, um, the, uh, He's not as light as he used to be. He's not as spontaneous. Well, that, I, look, I, preoccupied. I, I, would preoccupied. Say, I would say that's probably true. I mean, look, there's no doubt that the weight of the office uh, has an impact. But I, I will tell you that um, the longer I'm in this job, the more I enjoy it, the, the more optimistic I am about the American people, the more optimistic I am about this country. Uh, it, there, there's something about this position that gives you a pretty good vantage point of the country as a whole. And for all the arguing that we get into and, and all the debates between Democrats and Republicans. Tremendous they're, they're, country, they're, right? They're, they're, and, and, and there's just a, a sense, uh, there, there's a, a common sense and, and a decency to the American people that makes me optimistic, even on the worst of days. I asked this to President Bush when I talked to him a few weeks ago. Uh, does it disturb you that so many people hate you? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, it's a serious question. You, you, you know, the, the truth is, the, the, the people, and I'm sure uh, uh, pre previous presidents would say the same thing, whether it was Bush or Clinton or Reagan or anybody. Uh, the, the people who dislike you don't know but you. They hate you. E even e e the, the folks who hate you, they don't know you. Uh, what they, that's true. What they hate is whatever funhouse mirror image of you that's out there. And they don't know you. And so you don't take it personally. No, you don't ever? No, because you know that if you, if you just... Doesn't it annoy you sometimes? You know, uh, look, I think that by the time you get here, uh, you have to have had a pretty thick skin. Okay. If you didn't, then you probably wouldn't have gotten here. If Fox Sports says the Super Bowl tonight. You know, it's going to charge you an enormous amount of money for it, and uh, <laughs> they're going to make a fortune. And they paid all my expenses here. Um, who's going to win the game? It, it, come, on, uh, come on, no, come on, come no, on. Bill, here's the thing. Once my bear is lost, I don't pick sides. So you don't care? Well, no, I do care. I want, well, a, I want a great win? game. I want a great game. You don't care who wins? But these are pretty evenly matched teams. They I, are. The, uh, you know, I think that uh, you know, Green Bay is probably a little faster. Steelers got a little more experience. I think the Steelers not having their starting center uh, is something that they got to be worried now, about. Now, will you actually watch the game? Because I know you're a big party tonight. J Lo is going to be here, yeah. which is why I have to get out of here because I'll frighten her. You're invited, if she man. Comes in. No, I know. I'm, yeah. I, I you have to take it. off your tie. I don't want to ruin the party yeah, for yeah. you guys. You'll, you'll but, get, uh, you know, uh, yeah, your barbecue know. wings. But are you actually going to watch the game? Are you gonna, of course I watch the you're game. You're going to sit down and you're going to no, watch. I'm not, I'm not you know football, you know, like blitzes and coverage and all that. You know, I know football, man. You do? Absolutely. Because I know you're a basketball guy. I know, I know football. Yeah? I know football. And, and I will watch the game. What happens is I schmooze with everybody when they come. Yeah. Give them a little bit of time. But once the game starts, they can just sit down and watch the and game. And you're out of there. Well, no, I'm, I'll be sitting there with them. But I don't want them coming up uh, chitting and chatting. All right. We've got to focus on football. Well, that's our live uh, part of this deal. And, and I have to say, I enjoy talking to you. I disagree with you sometimes. I hope you think I'm fair to you. I try to be. Um, but uh, I wish you well in the next two years. Well, it's always you know, a pleasure. Right. It's Enjoy nice it. to see you.